Thanks for tuning in again, everybody. You were just listening to the Coral 12TX1 triaxle drivers. And in a moment, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of how I built these. You may have seen the previous build, which had the Coral Flat 2 8-inch full-range driver paired with a 12-inch a Coral Woofer. All I've done is take the center baffle out, build a new center baffle, and put these wings in. If you've been watching my previous videos, you, you'll know that I'm crazy for coral drivers, coral speakers, and you know, in particular full range drivers and, and high sensitivity sort of speakers. And I just couldn't pass up an opportunity to buy these beauties uh, for, for, for such a price. I mean, I'm always about bang for buck when it comes for, to, to, to audio and hi-fi. You could get speakers and drivers like Tannoy's I could, I could shell out sort of $5,000 for them here in Australia, but um, that just probably doesn't sit right with me. I truly believe that you can get close to that sound for a lot, lot less. Probably not. Probably not quite as good, not 100% of that, but you know, you can get 95% of the way with, you know, a bit of research and a bit of can-do and a bit of DIY, a bit of matching really match your system and get a lot more sound for your money. The difference between these drivers and traditional full range drivers with say a whizzer cone is that these are triaxle. It's probably more common to get coaxles, which is two in one drivers. Being a triaxle, this is has a woofer cone with a mid range cone and then a tweeter sort of all mounted into the one driver. So it doesn't make it a single driver. It is three drivers in one. Uh, I think it's wired up more as a two-way crossover because it also comes with a um, variable dial for the tweeter. So you can really dial in those highs. Looks to be sort of a cast iron basket. No ring in that whatsoever. And right now I've got the, the tweeter dial just sort of mounted on the back there which is what the previous owner had. I had considered sort of mounting it into the bottom of the baffle, but that might be something for another time. So without further ado, let's uh, dial back to how I built these. I'll hopefully give you some ideas. Now bear in mind, I am an amateur. Amateur hi-fi enthusiast and amateur DIY enthusiast. Uh, I am learning as I go. I know what sound I'm going for and what I'm trying to achieve. I am getting better with the router, but if you're a woodworker or a carpenter, you're probably gonna watch this video and go, oh my God, take this guy away from the power tools before he kills himself. In saying that, <laughs> I do work with what I've got. I try not to spend a lot of money. If I don't have the parts or the tools, I don't go out there and spend a lot of money. I make do with what I got and, you know, hopefully it gives you a few ideas so here we go.
looking and listening to these beauties. I think they turned out visually much better than my last build. I was able to sort of build upon my skills with the router. You know, I'm happy with this roundover effect that I was able to achieve. Because funnily enough, I, I, I was thinking about front mounting them, but really, it's just an odd shape. It wouldn't have looked any good. And as with most of Coral's drivers, they, I think they were always intended to be rear mounted. So what's funny is just how thick they were and how, I mean, this is sort of a 19 millimeter baffle and it still protrudes from the back. Just this corks around here, not so much the actual driver itself. If I didn't already have the wings built, I could have gone for an even thicker baffle, but um, that's getting up there in cost wise. So I guess the question is, what do I think about them? Well, they took me a while to break in, I reckon, and I'm still breaking these ones in. Um, and it, it took me a while to get used to the, the tweeter dial and sort of dialing that in to what I liked. But then as they, as I broke them in through the, the next couple of days, they really started to come alive. They really have that live sort of feel and sound, which, which is why they use these sorts of coaxials for, for, for live PA speakers anyway. They don't really make coaxials these days for home hi-fi use. They're, you know, they're targeted towards professional use, but back in the 60s, 50s, 60s, companies like Coral and Tano, they used, they put a lot of effort into, into these sorts of builds. As you can expect from having such a powerful tweeter, the, the air is very pronounced. They can get very bright, but it's beautiful as well. Some of those twangs from a guitar are just, just absolutely stunning and they really hit your ear. They're loud. These are much louder than other sort of full range speakers and they can handle it as well. They seem to be able to handle that loudness and they don't they definitely don't break up in that mid-range, probably because they don't have the, the, the peaks and s spikes that some of those shouty mid-rangers have. Bass-wise, again, they really came alive after some break-in. At first, I was like, oh, definitely help having that second woofer driver in the previous build, but the more I broke these in, the louder I could go, the more fine-tuned I got that tweeter, oh yeah these really sung some of the the bass and some of those tracks was really hitting me these seem to really work best with uh rock music and pop music any sort of acoustic world music pink floyd sounds amazing on them probably a little bit disappointing with the you know the hip-hop but it remains to be seen as i as i break them in even more so without further ado i've got another royalty free track to play you uh, from the art list so enjoy, let me know what you think. If you had similar experiences with coaxials, triaxials, especially in uh, open baffles, I'd love to hear from you.